I'm here at Scripps Skin Care with founder and dermatologist, Associate Professor Greg Goodman, and today we're talking about the topic of wrinkles and what you can do about them before it's too late. So can you begin by giving us a breakdown on the different types of wrinkles that people may find on their faces? The wrinkles are many things, it's not just one element. They're lines on your faces that are etched in like, uh, like expression lines and, and lines that, uh, that come with movement of various parts of the face. And then there are real dividing lines in your face, things like the nasolabial folds and marionette lines that are really uh, not wrinkles. They're actually just folds of tissue that are being held up so your whole face is in one amorphous mess, but it actually is divided up into segments. So they're not really wrinkles, they're actually uh, dividing um, materials really. So you said some wrinkles are caused by expression. Can skincare actually help these types of wrinkles? No, skin care can only go so far and really expression lines or expression wrinkles are not going to be helped enormously by skin care. There's only one proviso to that in that your, your very fine lines that people would get, which are not really wrinkles, but more a textural, what's called epidermal wrinkling, is helped by moisturisers. It's helped by long-term use of vitamin A preparations. It's helped by antioxidants. It's helped by um, various other uh, materials, you know, uh, DNA repair enzymes and various other things. They all have an effect on the tissue quality of your skin that may produce very fine wrinkles, but the expression lines themselves are entrenched. The only thing you can do with that is to make the skin more plastic. And to make the skin more plastic, that's a function of what's called hydroxy acids. They are plasticizers rather than moisturizers. And they will actually make the skin fold in a better way. So long-term use of those may help the skin be more resilient to the, light, to the static lines that are induced by recurrent expressions. Everyone talks about peptides in their skincare, but can you actually explain to us what they are? Peptides are messengers. Um, they have basically been found that the body actually has a very short chain of what's called amino acids, so building blocks of protein. And they take a chunk of these, maybe three or five, as a message to one cell to another to produce maybe collagen, uh, maybe other materials in the skin. And the cells that produce these um, and uh, the recipient of these can be influenced or can be built into skin care. The question always is, does the message in the form of these short little chains, these subgroups of proteins, actually get from the skin product into the skin to relay that message effectively? Ingredients that claim to work as sort of topical Botox, do they actually work? Topical Botox, if you like, um, is a very controversial subject. Uh, there is a company that has tried to produce a topical Botox that didn't get very far in studies, and that's proper uh, botulinum toxin. Not really, we shouldn't call it by trade name. But the materials that you're talking about are chemicals that are these peptides, that are three, five, seven amino acids that are, that are designated to pretend that they're a chemical that Botox actually stops working in the, in the skin. And yes, they're correct, they are the ones that actually are the message, but it doesn't work as simply as that. You've got to get it down to the, not only to where the message is meant to be delivered, but you've got to get a sufficient concentration and you've got to get it to the right nerves talking to the right muscles. And that is a very hard thing. That's a very hard leap of faith to make, really. So it may not exist perfectly yet, but it doesn't mean it won't in the future. Yeah, it's possible that with the right delivery systems and with the right targeting and uh, that we may find that, that these agents can in future deliver. Mm -hmm.